boy, there sure are a lot of video game genres out there, aren't there? You almost think like there's nothing left to invent, everything's been made. We even now have competitive cooking games in the form of Overcooked 2. But maybe, just maybe, there's more out there. Genres that have yet to be truly defined, genres that maybe have only existed as one or perhaps two isolated games over the last 40 years of history of video games. So these are the top 7 genres that need to happen. Video game genres that you just kind of feel in your heart of what well, I do, in my heart of hearts, the one I keep in my basement, should exist should be real, should be represented on every platform for everyone to enjoy. And hey, if you have your own genre suggestions, make sure to mention them in the comments. That being said, let's get it started with number 7. Multiplayer Dating Simulators The single player variant is pretty much ubiquitous, it's everywhere, it's even gone beyond dating humans or whatever those things were in those Japanese games and we're now dating pigeons and pretty much everything else. But it's always in a single player context. So why not take the next step? Why not add multiplayer to it? You may wonder, well, that's a bad idea. People are gonna talk to each other and you know how people get. Well, here's the beauty of it. You don't let the players type. You only let them respond with stock answers like in a dialogue tree. You have to get the players to use the dialogue trees to talk to each other. And, and this is very important, you don't have every character in the game be a player. You have NPCs and players in equal amount and you don't let them know which one of them is a human. Maybe perhaps until the end of the... Oh, I wouldn't call it the end of the relationship, but the end of the courting phase where they're effectively going out on a date and they both have to agree, perhaps, to reveal that they are human or not because the NPC, I don't know, you can get them to sometimes refuse to say if they're human or not. And if you really want to throw things for a curveball, don't let players assign themselves a gender. Oh, I would pay money just to see the fall from that, it would be amazing. Don't even tell them what gender they are. Just have their NPC in the world be random. I mean, you can make it first person, like all those Japanese visual novel things are. You never see the actual player character, just the NPCs to interact with. If you leave it at that, you, as the player, you can be anything and you will never know it. And have the dialogue be so vague that nobody actually knows proper details about their own character. Yeah, this would be a bit of a trolling game, but at the same time, it would get people to connect to each other, or it could act as a really great Turing test, or I may have inadvertently started World War 3. I'm fine with any of these options. Number 6. Temporal Games I only know of one game that has the proper mechanics to be qualified as being part of the genre, and that is Akron. It was an RTS based on the idea that your actions in the past can affect the future and vice versa. It worked through the concept of time waves, where each wave would move at a fixed speed from the beginning of the game to the present time. And you could build time portals that let you travel back at any point into the past, and any change you made in the past, or was made by somebody else in the past, would be propagated through a time wave all the way to the present. So that means you could send units back to yourself in the past to help you with a fight that you lost. And you could win it if you prevented the enemy in the present from sending units themselves back into the past to stop you from sending... Well, it's a bit complicated, but it worked. And more games need this. There needs to be a genre based on this. I'm honestly shocked that no big studio, no big publisher stole the idea of time waves. Everybody's doing battle royale. Imagine battle royale with time waves. You'd not just be fighting in a 3D space, you'd be fighting throughout the timeline of that match. Going back into the past, moving to another place where you would not be shot in the face because you, you know, wanted to pick up a pan and quang somebody over the melon, but 
that somebody had a shotgun and lag. Imagine this applied to anything. Imagine it applied to racing games. Imagine it applied to action games, especially shooters. Temporal games are a thing that could exist. They would require some refinement, maybe. I mean, Akron was not the greatest RTS ever made, but the time mechanics in were kind of brilliant. Number five, linguistic shooters. Imagine Typing of the Dead. You know it, right? It started out as an arcade mod, I think it was an arcade mod for House of the Dead, where they replaced the light gun with a keyboard and you had to type what words were shown on screen. Something similar to that, but instead of typing words shown on screen, you have to come up with them. There is something already similar to this, not a shooter per se, it's not turn based either like uh, Bookworm Adventure was, and that is Spellspire, which is a game that I very much enjoyed. But I don't just mean games where you get a jumble of letters and then have to make up words, not just that. Though that applied to a shooter would be awesome, especially a competitive shooter. But you could also integrate things like learning languages, like have Duolingo, which is a software, it's an app used to help people learn another language. Implement something like that into a game. You want to beat this enemy while well, it's shooting at you, translate this into a different language or translate this from that language into yours. Figure out what it means. You have like until your life runs out to beat this enemy and then move on to the next one and maybe find some health pickups or not. Maybe you have to get a perfect score in a certain time to actually get your life back. This would be an awesome educational game. Again, especially if it has a competitive component. Because as we all know, people are really in love with their e -peens. If it has a ranked mode, they will play with it until they become masters of it. But instead of being masters of spewing profanities in Russian, also known as Counter-Strike Go, they'll become proficient at a language, at spelling, at discerning words. It'll be awesome. Number four, an evil god game. If you're thinking Dungeon Keeper, no, that's not exactly what I mean. If you've been following my uh, development logs for Gods of Azure, you're probably wondering, wait a minute, didn't you stop doing those like three, four months ago because you got a second job? Yeah. But I did mention that there was a mode where um, you would be playing as a sort of fallen or diminished god. It's sort of like, and this is a spoiler for Wonder Woman, which I suggest you go watch. It's a very nice movie, as long as you don't watch the last... 15 minutes. Okay, done good. It's like Ares in the Wonder Woman movie. He is powerless. Like completely and utterly incapable of hurting anybody directly. So he whispers in the ears of men and women. English is kind of strange because English uses men like in the exact same place that every other language uses human. I think it's just a shorthand. It's not six or anything. It's just meant to... Thankfully, there is male and female and man would be all of them. Not a language, so I don't care. But Ares manipulates others into doing evil and from their evil acts, he gains strength. That can be the foundation of a game. Well, that was going to be a mode to play uh, Gods of Azure in where you could only at best maybe draw some scary stuff on a wall, but it's kind of obvious that I'm not going to be the one to make it. You can think of it as a Satan simulator, but in the, you know, more uh, the deceiver, the whisper in the dark kind of menace. We go around into a, it could be a sandbox. I it could be a game where you are in a sandbox or maybe you can it, again it's a genre it doesn't have to be defined by one single setting location or uh, approach it is a genre where you play as an evil entity manipulating slowly people entities around you to commit acts of vile evil for your enjoyment and to relish in your power like slowly manipulating them to turn on each other to destroy things to break up with the ones they love to hurt them Okay, that maybe sounded a bit darker than I meant it to sound, unless you entered that and I think that came out wrong. But you, you get the idea, it's, it's you, you're supposed to be like evil. Th this can be played up comedically, you know, where it's more like Overlord, where you're, you know, you're that kind of evil. Where, yeah, you kill things and massacre, but look at it, it's all fun and lighthearted. Oh, look, th those murderous little goblins, gremlins, whatever they were, minions, they're jumping willingly into that cauldron and melting themselves so they can make a better sword for you after they murdered like 50 people. You could have it more lighthearted, which is probably the only way you can actually make it because, oh boy, if it ends with a 
it would have to be like really detached from um, a visual perspective sort of maybe like that which sleeps if it ever actually comes out which probably won't because it's kind of in development hell but anyway it's basically you being satan the whisper the, the fever the lord of lies fun fact the snake that wasn't satan yeah, it turns out uh Satan's gonna have a um, well, more similar to the um, Sonic original characters you keep finding on DeviantArt that uh, they even let you import them into your uh, and one of the last Sonic games so your OC can be canon sort of like Satan is but anyway that's the core idea of the game an evil god game where you're a pathetic god like really pathetic you can't even lift a boulder to cry somebody with it you have to get others to do it for you number three competitive photography games as you may know i have a camera like an actual one that works and it is amazing like <laughs> Oh boy, to think we could have actually afforded something like this back then when Steam didn't cost... It's under a dollar now. We, <laughs> It's a good thing I have a second and third job. Otherwise, oh heck, I can't even really spare the time to make these shows properly anymore, can I? But anyway, I enjoy photography. Going around, snapping pictures of cats and stuff. Mostly cats. The stuff tends to frown if you take pictures of it. And I've been thinking, why are there competitive photography video games? And you can have them in multiple forms. You can have them in the, well, you know, in-game photography kind of way. You've had games like, what was that thing? Pokemon Snap that let you take pictures of Pokemon for some reason. And you have photo modes in pretty much every game. Why not have a game that's all photo mode? And you have to compete with others to get the best shots possible. Now this could be time limited, like there's a virtual bird somewhere around there, you have to find it, hunt it down, not kill it, just take a picture of it when it's doing something neat and make sure nobody else does. I'm not saying kill them, just I don't know, sabotage their picture somehow by screaming at the birds who run away. Or you could take, since I mentioned Pokemon, you could take the Pokemon Go approach and be assigned objectives in the real world to take pictures of stuff around you and they they could have points associated with them especially if you get them like at the golden hour or when it's raining you know those are worth extra points or with no people around or uh, from certain angles and you can upload those to a uh, probably a neural network powered server that validates that you took a picture of what you were supposed to take a picture and it's that thing and that's something random you just found on google photos and you get points for that and it's competitive because everybody is trying to do the same and will probably somebody will find you trying to take a picture of something and uh clobber you over the head so you wouldn't take their spot on the okay so maybe this isn't the best idea ever but at the same time it would either foster a unity between local photographers or people who just meet and take photos of stuff and make friends and talk to each other about hobbies and you know just hang out be brought together by a game one that maybe they won't forget about like next month when it's no longer the cool thing to do because if it's aimed at photography nuts they'll not stop doing it that's their passion that's their hobby oh sure if it's gonna be tied to something like pokemon there's gonna be a lot of interlopers a lot of newcomers that oh my god i always like taking photos look at my fifty thousand selfies i took in the bathroom this morning but they're gonna leave like in five minutes but the core people they'll be there it'll be for them it could work i think it could absolutely work you can make it cooperative like get a picture of somebody taking a picture of the thing you're taking a picture of or two people must take a, a picture that can be combined to one single picture or something somebody will figure it out number two social murder mystery games when facebook games were a thing i had an idea so here's the thing randomly when you're playing the game and only in the game you are assigned the role of murderer and your job is to use a set of pretty fine tools that you have at your disposal that the game gives to you have a selection of them selection of places selection of uh, methods escape routes stuff like that and you have to use those to murder in the game one of your friends a, a person in your friend let's end the game very important just their avatar in the game and you can sort of make a plan how you can do it where would end the game only in the game and if you do it right and the character is dead then all the other friends that you have that are playing that game will have to solve the murder but they don't know who killed that person they just have the clues that maybe you left behind if you're sloppy or 
if the game tries to help them out and gives them some hints like where it happened what the signs on the body were and they have to sort of you know um talk to people you have to come up with alibis it's sort of like uh, an investigation game where you're not just simply collecting clues that are always going to be there and you're not going to talk to a set number of npcs that are always going to be there and one of them guaranteed did it and they're probably going to say oh it was me at a certain point no 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 they're going to actually have to find out who did it like piece together clues and confront possible suspects confront you and you yourself oh you're you're in on this you can draw them off the scent you can try and incriminate somebody else. You can maybe even get some uh, somebody to be your accomplice. Somebody that the game assigned the motive to. It's gonna be like Clue, but you're not just the investigator, you're also the murderer. It'll be amazing. Th this kind of game, you can place it like in any kind of location, any kind of setting. It just has to be multiplayer. You can even do it with mobile phones now that Facebook games are dead and they've been there for like, what, 10 years? Man, it's been a long time. In hindsight, I should've probably made this game, like started the genre, but uh, I was kind of busy and uh, well, I didn't know how. And number one is a car MMO. Now you're gonna say, wait a minute, you numbskull. Ubisoft alone now has two car MMOs. Well, when you break it right down, are they really MMOs and not just single player games with really crappy DRM and um, especially the second one that doesn't even have PvP yet? No, no, no. I mean a real car in the move. One where the car is what's important. Like actual cars. You don't need planes. You don't need boats or motorcycles. You don't need a character. You just have cars. Cars that you can collect. Cars that you can race or just drive around. It's all about the cars. Not about some story about Gordon Freeman's long lost brother that probably responsible for uh, halfway through not existing not about some getting senpai to notice you were getting followers on twitter or something no no, no. it's about your enjoyment of cars it's about what i've i've kept saying regarding to car games for a long time selling you on a culture and being said in an mmo you can have multiple cultures of cars at the same time each with their own zones or maybe sometimes overlapping and cross-disciplinary events to show off you not just race them but to show your craft and how you've modified and modeled your car just have car shows have people enjoy cars be the central idea of an mmo yeah i wouldn't heard if it had a big sprawling world like the crew does maybe set in europe or japan just saying i mean a lot of nice roads in europe a lot of nice vistas lots of them in japan too just saying could be done smaller scale but could be done all that in mmo all that in one single game that is playable by a lot of people online at the same time where, it, where they can do cannonball run style events where they go from one place to another and enjoy the road and the car well, that'll be it for my top 7 genres that need to happen. Again, if you have your own suggestions, make sure to mention them in the comments. But I'm willing to bet that yours will not start World War 3. Okay, now that may have sounded like a dare, so... Well, you're probably gonna take it as a dare, so there's no point in me trying to stop you, is there? Nope, there isn't. Goodbye.